Hello everyone, I'm Mandy from fit to sew and this is the first video in series two of my So You Want To Make A Bra video tutorials. And in this video, I'm going to talk about and perhaps more importantly, show you how to make a fitting band. The main point and advantage of having a fitting band is that you don't have to make a complete new bra every time you want to uh, try out a new uh, cut style or alter the fit or just make an assessment of something new that you want to try out. Because as much as it is a good idea to practice making bras, especially when you're a beginner, it can get really tedious making bra after bra after bra um, from start to finish every single time just because you want to test out the fit of something or try out a new cut design. Um, especially when you don't like the new cut design and or the new pattern doesn't fit. So you've kind of spent several hours making a complete new bra and obviously you've used all your supplies, um, potentially for nothing. So making a fitting band is excellent um, for this. So another thing is that having a properly fitting band is really the first step towards getting a properly fitting and comfortable bra. Obviously once you've established your wire size, which hopefully you would have seen my previous video and you'll have that um, already sorted for yourselves. Um, the thing is that whenever we try on a bra, a new bra, the tendency is, I think for all of us really, is to automatically focus on the cuts. Um, think that if there's any, if it doesn't fit properly, then it's probably something to do with the cut, unless of course obviously the band is far too loose or far too tight. But actually logically when you think about it, the cups are sitting in the band. And so if the band isn't quite right, it's not going to be holding the cups in quite the right position. And so although the cups themselves might actually be perfectly right in terms of volume um, and shape and so on, if they're not in quite the right position on your body, then this, the whole thing's going to look wrong and you're going to be constantly fiddling with the pattern for the cups, when in fact it might be the band that isn't quite right. So. When we think about making a band or the, the band of a bra, we, um, what do we really think about? It's the front frame and the power net back band, but also it's the straps. And I'm willing to bet that probably the fit of the straps is the most overlooked aspect of making a fit in a bra. But actually the length of the strap, the position of the strap, the angle of the strap, they all make a difference to the comfort um, especially and fit of your bra. So the straps are also quite an important thing to get right at the beginning. Unless you're making in a strapless bra, of course. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to take your front frame pattern and make a couple of little adaptations to it to make it suitable and easier to use as a fitting band. Um, and then in the video after this one, we'll talk about assessing the fit. So this video is about how to make a fitting band. To make the fitting band these are the things we're going to need to use. So first of all I've got the pattern that we're going to use and I've already gone ahead and made up the cups um, because although as I was saying although we're not going to fit the cups we do need cups in order for the fitting band to um, be able to fit on us. So make up the cups um, then I've cut out the, the back band in power net as usual. Um, let me see, the, the main thing is the uh, front frame. So I've laid this out on my duoplex and as you can see I have left, um, as a, there's an inch here away from the fold. I'm going to have an inch extra in the front and that's so that we can make any adjustments in the bridge area, either to let it out or to take it in, because it's a lot easier when you've got something to get hold of. If you're gonna take this in a tiny smidge, you imagine, um, that's gonna be so hard to get hold of when you've only got that tiny bit of fabric. Whereas if you've got something here already, you can make any adjustments in or out and it works a lot better. So I'm gonna cut that out. Then the strap, um, I've gone ahead and made the two elastic strap components with the rings and sliders on that are going to go in the back, attached to the back band. So I've made those already. But the actual fabric part of the strap, 
I'm not going to make a fabric. Instead, I'm going to use some strap tape. So this is the same width as um, the usual uh, strap elastic, but it's, it's soft and it's uh, not stretchy. So the reason I'm using uh, this instead is that I'm going to mark, um, in fact, let me show you, um, roughly in the middle of the strap, I'm going to mark one inch increments, she said, having not brought the pen over with her. Let me use that. that. So roughly the center of the strap. So each strap is approximately 10 inches long. I've cut this longer. So you can see now when I put that there, that this strap tape is appreciably longer than the actual pattern piece. And that's to give me room if I need to make the strap longer I've got space if I need to take the strap up again I'm going to have something that I'm able to hold on to to pull the strap up so roughly in the middle of the strap so that it's going to be uh, sitting on his shoulder which is the easiest piece to get hold of to pinch anything out I'm going to just do some one inch markings maybe four, I shouldn't need any more uh, than that really. And then at the sewing machine, I will stitch them because obviously pencil marks don't look too good, but you need to be able to see easily, especially when you're fitting yourself, it's very fiddly. So the more um, help you give yourself, the better. So I will, at the sewing machine, stitch those lines, do the same on the other strap. So that's the straps. Then because I'm, uh, making an underwire bra I'm going to need underwire casing which I've pre-shaped as I showed you to do in the um, basic bra making class so my bits of underwire channeling I've got a couple of safety pins because the, um, I'm going to need to attach the strap tape to the top of the cups I don't want to stitch it um, because it's just easy to pin it and it's easier to undo again otherwise you've got loads of seams you're constantly undoing so a couple of safety pins for the straps i've got my top and bottom band elastic for the frame then i've got um the magic ingredient which is wash away thread it kind of it kind of makes me laugh because you, you really need to keep it in a plastic bag because if you're somewhere um if it's humid or damp um or your hands are clammy or whatever and you touch this stuff because it's water soluble, it starts to dissolve. So to protect it from humidity and dampness and so on, um, it kind of suggests that you keep it in a plastic bag. It always makes me think it's like radioactive or something. You have to keep it in a special container, but really um, it is sensible. It is quite sensitive to, to dampness. So um, that's wash away thread and you can get that um, on the internet easily enough. I think Madeira is the company that makes it. Um, I think I got this from an online retailer called Cotton Patch, but I can't remember. But anyway, wash away thread, excellent. You use it in the top through, uh, through the needle. Um, what happens is when you wash it or get it damp, uh, this dissolves and then you can take your uh, pieces apart. So if you're making a test bra that you know you're not going to wear and that um, you're going to need to make adjustments so that you're not using your supplies all the time, Unless there's anything major you need to do, you can uh, reuse the pieces, reuse the elastics, um, just by washing it and drying it off and using it again. So I like using this stuff. And then I've got um, one of these, and if you're familiar with these, it's a bra back extender. Um, I don't use it, uh, I think if your bra's too tight and you need to use one of these, then you really need to either buy or preferably make a new bra. But it's very handy for fitting because if you make your fitting band and it's too tight, you'll need to know how by how much to make it longer. So if you think, okay, I need to go one more row of eyes, then you'll know that that's five eighths of an inch. So it, make, it takes the guesswork out of trying to make something bigger. So it's quite useful to have one of those. And then I've got um, my drafting paper um, on one of these. Uh, kiddie paper holders from Ikea. They're brilliant if you can get near Ikea and get one of these. They're really handy. So those are all my supplies. I'm going to go ahead and cut out my frame piece with my extra 
one inch allowance in the front there um, and then I'll meet you back here and we'll start the process of sewing it all together. Okay so here at the sewing machine I've already gone ahead and stitched my little rows of stitching one inch apart for my adjustment lines on the straps, both pieces. And I've done that in um, a contrasting thread just to make life easier. Um, and then I've marked up my frame pieces. I, they look very clumsy because I've used a Sharpie. I don't want it to wash away when I um, take this apart using the wash away thread kind of thing. Um, I want to be able to see it. I wish it hadn't gone quite so fuzzy, but um, <laughs> there you are. Nothing in life is perfect. And, and I've marked in my lines where the original pattern came. So now I've got my extension in the middle here for making adjustments. Um, before I change to my wash away thread, there are a couple of things that I want to do just in regular thread. The first thing is to turn over a quarter of an inch along the top edge of the bridge because that the pattern includes a quarter inch turning for elastic, which we're not going to be using, but we want to make sure that we allow for the fact that that will be a quarter of an inch shorter in the real thing. So I'm going to just stitch that. And then I'm also going to stitch uh, the quarter inch seam allowance mark around both cup bowls here. Because um, you'll see when, I, when we come to apply the uh, channeling and so on, you need to have a definite line there to help you when it comes to putting the casing on and later on sewing in the cups and so on. You definitely don't want that disappearing with wash away thread and you definitely don't want to mark it with a friction pen for example that's going to disappear when we press it. So I'll just do those couple of bits of sewing. I'm just going to use a long sort of machine basting stitch, it doesn't have to be anything too fancy. There we go, that's taken away the seam allowance at the bridge. And now I'm going to use um, quite a small stitch because I want it to be um, nice and accurate and I'm going to now stitch around the quarter inch seam allowance um, in the cup bowls. So remembering whatever it is that you use to mark your um, quarter of an inch, get that on the go. And the thing is to be accurate here, so I'm not whizzing round at super speed. The main thing is to be accurate because the worst thing to do with any any twirl or uh, fitting garment or whatever is to not sew accurately because when you come to do a fitting, you won't know whether it actually doesn't fit or whether it's because your sewing has maybe been a little bit sloppy or inaccurate. And especially with bras and lingerie generally, you've only got a quarter of an inch seam allowance in the first place. So if you veer off the path of righteousness even a little bit, it can make quite a bit of difference to the fit in the end. So accuracy rather than speed is what we're aiming for here. I don't know that you need to watch me sew the other side in exactly the same way, but um, what I will do is press this when it's finished because as you'll know, um, every time a piece of fabric go, gets hammered through a sewing machine, it looks a bit sorry for itself afterwards. So we want this to be nice and flat. Again, as I say, accuracy is what we're looking for in this fitting band. And so I'm going to give this a press just to flatten it all out again afterwards. Um, and the other thing I'm going to sew is the um, seam allowance, I was going to say, but it isn't really. We've artificially put this in here, but I want to sew this to the original size line so that we um, we start off with the original pattern. So I'm going to just do this in a long stitch. I don't want to do it in wash away, I mean you could do, but I, I don't normally do it in wash away thread, but I do just use a long machine basting stitch.
And I do fasten the ends off because you don't want it, oopsie, sorry, sewn over a pin. Um, you don't want it coming undone when you're trying it on because that's not going to help you with the fit process. Oops, there we go. Okay, so those are the things. I'm going to sew the other side. You don't need to watch me, as I say. I'll do that in a sec. Um, and then I'm going to change to the washaway thread. So I'll finish this, give it a press, meet you back here in a minute. Okay, many months have now passed and finally I've threaded my machine. Hurrah! Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is to sew on the underwire channeling uh, or casing, however you like to refer to it. I have pre-shaped it, as I said in my introduction. Honestly, um, you really, really need to get into the habit of, of doing this. You can see how much easier it it's sits and wants to be nice and flat when it's uh, sewn on. I have cut it or had it so that it's a good sort of inch and a half, four centimeters, whatever uh, language you like to speak, uh, longer than I need it to be because I don't know what might happen when I put the wires in to this particular pattern and so I need to make sure I've got plenty of space. I'm not going to close either of the ends off um, for the same reason. I may want to have a, a longer or shorter wire in there eventually. Um, I'm using the wash away thread uh, from now on but it's quite important or handy to use it for the casing because if you need to make major alterations to the frame and you need to take the uh, underwire channeling off it's such a pain to try and unpick it. Um, it's it's really one of the most horrible experiences you may have the misfortune to have. So way better to use the washaway thread um, and then it, it can just be sewn back on it if you need it to be afterwards when you make alterations. So I put my machine on. I'm going to pick uh, a nice long stitch, about three and a half, because we don't need to uh, labor on this too much. I'm just going to pop this on here. So I can start quite close to the top because I know that I've already allowed for my elastic allowance at the bridge. And what I'm doing is to place the right hand edge of the channeling. I've got the fluffy side up, right hand edge of the channeling just along this stitching line that I did just now to mark my quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm just going to start off fasten it off at the bridge end. I'm just coming round nice and carefully. You can really see how much nicer it is, easier it is with the pre-shaped channeling than trying to persuade a, a straight bit to go around this curve. Slow and steady. You can, well, I dare say you could understand in the first place, but you can really see why it's, it's a, the best idea is to do it in a contrasting thread because you can see easily where you're supposed to be stitching it to. Now, as I come up to the top here in the underarm section, I'm going to stop about an inch or so down from the top because I, I'm going to be putting elastic in here. I want to make sure I've got plenty of room and not crowd all of the fabrics on top of each other. So I'm just going to fasten it off. It's probably more than an inch actually, but you just need to be able to sew your elastics. And then when I've put the elastics on here, I'll go back and um, fix this in here. Easier to go back than it is to try and unpick at a later stage. And then I'm going to go straight in and do the second uh, row of stitching to secure the outer edge. Um, it's going to be pretty close at the bridge here, which it should be. The bridge is normally just wide enough to put two bits of channeling side by side. And it's handy to have it here because I might think, oh, I'll take this bridge in all the way down and take out more than I've got space for here. So it's quite handy to already have your casing in place just to um, help you decide about taking it in. So 
the bridge in I should say Pass me off and then I'm just stitching as close as I can to the left hand edge of the casing now and keeping it flat with my fingers as I go around. Do remember to stay close to the left hand edge, you don't want to make this channeling too narrow otherwise you won't get the tips of the underwires through the space. Check in that when you get to here, this bit that's not stitched, you still must make sure it's lined up, otherwise, it will um, interfere with this edge. So, more or less the same place as before, stopping short of the top. Like that. So, that's my channeling sewn in place because th this is um the kind of permanent feature of a fitting band is that you keep the channeling in place all the time and all you're ever having to change is just a simple sewing line for your cups you're never having to take this off once you've got the fit right i'm going to do the same thing on the other side again you don't need to watch me doing that i don't suppose um then i'm going to sew the bands on at the side so here are my band pieces make sure the scoopy parts are uh, up uppermost and i'm going to add my power net back band to my duoplex front frame in just the same way as you would um, when you're making a proper bra now you have a, an option here your tendency, or at least my tendency is, as you just saw me doing, is to put it right sides together to sew. But actually for fitting, it's a lot easier to have the seams on the outside. Because if you need to make any alterations, take it in, for example, it's easier to grab hold of this whole thing, rather than if the seam were on the inside, and then you're trying to pinch a tiny bit um, there. So I try, like to try and remember anyway, I don't always, but I try to remember to sew it wrong sides together so that you can easily gain access to all of the seams. So I'm going to do that on both sides and then I'll meet you back here. Okay, so now I have stitched my other piece of channeling on the other side of the cup bowl and I've added my power net back band. I, as I was saying earlier on, I've stitched it wrong sides together and then I have just um, flattened the seam onto the duoplex onto the front frame and zigzagged it instead of the two rows of top stitching that we normally do. So we don't need to um, faff about doing two neat rows of top stitching, but I do want to secure this seam allowance down flat against the stable part of the band, which is the, the duoplex part. Because when this is on, this is does get all the tension in this seam. I still want it to be as strong as possible, even though it's not going to be a real bra so I'm not worried about it looking pretty but I do still want it to have the same um, structure for one to yeah structure um, I've also on this side stitched the cup in and I'll talk to you about that in, when I do the other side but I've stitched it in um, again wrong sides together because it's just a lot easier to get access um, the cup I've done the same thing I've sewn it opened it up and then I've just zigzagged it flat. I haven't trimmed it away or anything because we're not concentrating on the cups. But we still do still want the cups to be as they are would be in an actual bra. We don't want any fit issues to look as if it's coming from the cup when it might not be. So let's put the machine on. I've stitched this in the quarter inch seam allowance and I'm just going to quickly flatten this down against the uh, front frame with zigzag stitch. The stitch I'm using is about four and a half wide and too long. We don't want it to be um, too close together like a satin stitch. We don't want it to be too uh, wide apart and, and relatively useless. So let's just do this. As I'm sewing, I'm sort of gently um, pulling the fabrics apart a little bit just to make sure that this seam is flat and I'm not ending up bunching anything over and losing any um, uh, size in, in doing that. 
by now I'm a fanatic for trimming the threads off as I go along don't like things looking all hairy and just check that that is flat that I haven't allowed anything to kind of bunch over so that I'm losing width by taking it um, into a kind of a pleat over there so that's my um, back band sewn in place and secured properly at the side seam and then when I put the cup in I did it as I said wrong sides together now at the bridge, oops, sorry, turn this off. At the bridge, I've already turned in my quarter inch seam allowance at the top, and I, I haven't done that. I haven't finished the top edge of this cup at all. So I need to remember that I have to start, match this up a quarter of an inch down from the top of the cup. And then I've got my nice big fuzzy notches marked here. So I'm going to just quickly pin this in place. So I match up all my notches um, first and then see how it wants to fit in between. At the underarm section here, the top bit, at the elastic's gonna go across the band and the cup. So I'm just going to match those two at the top as normal. I don't need to allow one piece to have um, an el elastic allowance and the other piece not. So I've got those there and then I'm just gonna slide these together and pin them. Part you, I really love Geoplex. It's strong and it's soft and it's oh, sounds like a toilet roll effort. No, it's strong and it's soft and the it slides together. It's not slippery so that you can't handle it like silk, but it does glide against each other so it makes it easy to manoeuvre and get it where you want it. Okay, so just at the front here, allow a quarter of an inch proud at the top on the cup. Okay, let's put the machine on. I'm just going to use about a three length straight stitch to sew this in place. I don't need to uh, worry about having a quarter inch setting or anything because I've already got my quarter inch mark here with the, set, the line of stay stitching that we did right at the beginning. So pop that out of the way. And secure it at the top. And then I'm going to pop my hand inside to help me guide this around. I don't need the pins. Nice and steady, just matching those edges up. Putting the pins in long ways means I can't stitch over them. So I have to be a good girl and take them out as they go. There we are. It's quite nice actually because having this channeling here, it gives you something nice and firm to kind of steer the two layers together accurately careful not to stitch um, into the oops, into the channeling I don't want to lose any width in the channeling because then I won't get the wires in I'm just making sure I've still got that little 
quarter of an inch at the top there. Oops. Fasten it off. There we go. So now I have the channeling on, the back band sewn on, and the two cups are in. Uh, oh, the other thing I've done is to just stitch in the on the cup section the little strap tab that sticks up here. I've just uh, done a little row of stay stitching there so that I know when I come to pin my strap on that it, it should come um, level with that line because that's where it would be when the actual strap was stitched on if it were a fabric strap. So that's my um, fabric bits all joined up together. I'm going to go. Um, and do the elastics. Well, I'm not going to go and do them, I'm going to do them here so you can see me. I'm going to do the top band elastic and the bottom band here. As you can see, because I've got this uh, extra seam allowance in here going on, I'm going to need to stop the elastic um, there and carry on the other side um, because I can't go over the, the bump there. And this, I'm going to do this in exactly the same way um, as normal because we want the elastics to be on the inside like they would normally be. So I'm going to start off with the bottom band elastic. You probably by now don't need to watch me do this, but it's always good to have a recap. So I've got my uh, fuzzy side of the band elastic uppermost. I've got the fancy edge um, to the left, and I've got the straight edges of the fabric and the elastic lined up together at the bottom. I'm going to use a narrow zigzag of a width two and a length two because that's my that's what works best for me on this machine. Um, hopefully, if you've watched my other videos, you will have a little table of what stitches work best for your machine. I'm just going to nip along here. Okay, so the same thing that you would normally do, just some slight tension. I didn't line that. That looks like that doesn't line up there. That's because I've um, <laughs> misjudged my fabric and got a little wedge missing. So I will scoot across that flat, but just a tiny bit of tension. So I'm not pulling. I'm just stopping it from getting all kind of wavy and rucked up along that edge. here again with that very very slight tension until I get to my extra fabric section and fasten this off as you can see I'm just making this out of bits and pieces if you've got um, one of my practice packs or your own sort of scrap bag of, of fabrics you can just cobble it together nobody's ever going to see this but you do need to use the correct fabrics that you're going to use in your actual bra when you make any kind of toile or this fitting band so if you're never going to use duoplex although i can't see why you wouldn't but if you're never going to use duoplex in your frame then you must make this fitting band from the fabric that you are going to use or that you're most likely to use in future bras it's no good making, well, obviously you can see that you can't, but it's no good throwing this together in calico like perhaps you might do for a dressmaking twirl. It has to be made of the proper fabrics that your final bra is going to be made of because everything behaves so differently, um, especially power nets. You can get some power nets that are really stiff that are kind of like for corsets or surgical garments. You can get um, things that, fabric that's called power net, but it's actually a power mesh and it's very fine and far too stretchy. So. Uh, but if that's what you want to use in your bra then that's fine but you must make your fitting band using that the particular fabric okay so i've got to the middle here i'm gonna just chop this off so yeah so because i'm i'm just using scraps here when i'm finally happy with my fitting band and i've done all my alterations then i'm going to make a nice um 
nice one, probably purple. But then I'll, I'm going to make a, a nice fitting band that doesn't look quite such a Frankenstein effort. Um, but I just wanted to show you that I've got um, scraps of elastic. If you've got elastic and it's not long enough uh, to go all the way along, that's fine, you can piece it and I'll just show you how to do that. You don't, you don't have to have a full um, size piece. You can, as I say, you can just <laughs> cobble it together a bit as long as it's proper stuff that you're using. And by stuff, I mean fabrics. My little bit of tension. Oops. Okay. Let me make this much shorter. There we go. Just to show you better what I'm going to do. So trundle along to the end of your first piece nearly the end because then when you join in your second piece you need to butt the edges together you can't seam it obviously because then it'd be far too bulky um, and you just want to butt it together so I can see that they're not quite straight so let me try and match the angle there And then just keep it under control till you get past the join and then just carry on. Oh, blow me down. The bobbins run out. So as I was saying before, I so rudely interrupted myself. I've um, got a new bobbin now, so let's, and it's quite a full one, so hopefully that won't happen again. Anyway, it's always happened, doesn't it? I don't think anyone's ever made anything when the bobbin hasn't run out. Okay, so back to uh, joining the elastic. So trundle along until you get just enough space to add your extra bit of elastic. Hold it down and sew over the join and carry on to the end. Ta-da! There we are. I'm just going to trim that off. Don't need that piece. So, I mean, I've got now a couple of um, scrappy pieces of elastic and. Um, maybe not that piece necessarily but I would keep this in a little box somewhere because um, you know it doesn't matter how many joins you have so now when this where this piece is joined when I turn this to the inside I just need to make sure that I keep those two bits together it doesn't alter the integrity of, um, of the elastic because it ends up the two pieces are joined top and bottom so there we are um, okay so Trim my threads. Then I will apply the top band elastic exactly as you would on an actual bra. I'm going to just start it here. Same thing, fluffy side up, fancy edge to the left, bottom edges. Um, well, I say to the left, obviously, what I really mean is fancy edges pointing into the bra not towards the outside and the flat edges flat because obviously when you sew the other side it will be the other way around okay let's go i'm going to just pull this a little bit extra because this is the underarm section that we want to be snug And I want to keep my channeling out of the way. Do you remember we didn't sew right up to the top so we can keep that out of the way while we do the elastic part. And 
Tipp. Then I'm going to do the other side, then I'm going to flip them to the inside and do the three step zigzag just exactly as we would on a regular bra. I turn those up and then I'll meet you back here in just a few minutes. I've done um, one side of the turning the elastic in in the three step zigzag and, and as I was doing it I realised that I think I'm going to have to call this video my um, a spot the mistake video um, well not really mistake but I was saying about using wash away thread because then you can reuse your elastics and I realized that I've cut this in bra making autopilot mode I've cut this to the right size obviously if you realize that you need to let your um, side seam out when we do the fitting or extend the back you've got no elastic left to reuse um, so I thought I'd just do the other side just to show you that you don't need to cut it. You can leave extra elastic either end so that you can reuse this elastic should you need to have it be a bit longer. So apologies for that, but at least I realized before it was too late. Okay, so um, I'm just going to turn up the bottom band just to show you how to make sure we get the uh, joint nice and firm there butted up together and as I was doing that I realized that this elastic is a touch wide um, for this band. I like uh, 19 mil three quarter inch elastic in my bottom band and uh, possibly this pattern should have had only 12 mil I didn't really check it enough I'm sorry about that but it does give me the opportunity to show you what to do if you find that your elastic is a little bit too wide so you can see what's going to happen here it's only because actually it's only because I've already sewn the channeling onto the outside because ordinarily this would turn inside the channeling would go over the top and as long as the elastic doesn't come past the cup seam then it's okay but I'll take this opportunity to show you what to do you can probably already see I've cut the elastic which normally would be an absolute cardinal sin because um, in most things the elastic then has lost its integrity in bra making it's okay because we're going to sew along the top edge and hold it in place so it won't keep unraveling anymore um, and if this were a properly constructed regular bra the channeling would sit over the top of this cut edge so it is okay to cut the elastic so I have had people or, or seen queries um, in the Facebook groups about what to do and this is what you do so I'll start here and just talk you through it so I'm going to do my three step zigzag at my four and a half width and start here. So the same process, turn it, the elastic to the inside, and as you sew, just push gently that way to make sure that this fabric doesn't get pushed up like that as you're sewing. Okay, so all the same rules apply. And I realize that um, I keep talking about just like we do in a regular bra, I'm assuming that um, everyone that's watching this has made at least one bra, is familiar with the bra making process. If you're following my videos in sequence, then you will have already seen um, how to make a bra. So if this is, if you're completely new to bra making, you've never made a bra before, and you're going to be a bit baffled by what I'm talking about. Um, so I would advise that you quickly go back and just um, whiz through my actual bra making video. The thing is, you're probably not going to want to make a fitting bra, a fitting band rather, unless you've already made a bra and you realize that there might be some issues with it. So I've made an assumption, uh, which if it doesn't apply to you, I apologize, but the remedy is to go back and watch my other video. Okay, so if we go. As I come up to the join, I need to use some stiletto or some scissors just to keep that together. I don't want this opening up because you're losing then. It might appear that the 
band is too loose because actually you've got a big gap in your elastic there we go so just keep control of it and then still ease this don't forget if wherever you eased it put some tension on it in your first round you need to also do the same sort of amount of tension on your second pass so let's get through to here okay so now i've come up to the point where the elastic would um, encroach on the channeling i can't just stitch straight across the top of the elastic because then i've stitched into the channeling and i'll not get the wire in so what i've done is to trim it i'll sew across here and then i'll show you how i trimmed it uh, when i get to the other do the other side so let me just i'm going to snip this in the center looks like you would do anyway because otherwise it's a v-shape and it won't open up if you don't snip it okay so i'm going to just go along the top cut edge of my elastic and avoid the channeling underneath and then when I've got past there I can just go back to stitching along the top okay there's going to be a, a slight gap in the middle uh, because of this extra bit of seam where the elastic's not not fully attached but that's not really in the grand scheme of things it's not going to make any difference because right in the center of the bridge you don't have any tension or any stretch going on in the elastic anyway so the fact that there's not elastic in this little tiny section isn't going to make any difference to the fit so turn this off and i'll just show you when it comes to trying to work out how much to scoop out of the elastic just fold it to the inside smooth it and wriggle it just like you would uh, to sew it and you can even put a little pin to hold it in place there and then i can kind of by eye you can gauge where that sewing would be you could use a little marker pen if you think that will help um, in the end you just need to give it a go suck it and see as they say and just scoop out the fabric and the elastic and see how it goes well almost as if I've done this before that's worked out quite well but can you see I've just cut away the elastic so now it will sit underneath the stitching line for the casing there and won't make it difficult to get the wire in place so now i'm going to just go along there i'll just do that again so you can see the technique so starting back at the center along and then just just divert your stitching to follow that scoop and you can feel with your finger that you're not catching the channeling underneath pop that out put the tension back on that I need and then just carry on to the end pushing against the elastic and giving it that little bit of tension till you get to the end again with the bottom band elastic if you're not sure that you might need more uh, length in your band then you could have left elastic hanging off either end So that's the elastics. I will 
um, turn this other piece to the inside like I did before. And then I'll go back and just do a straight stitch to secure this channeling. It's not, see now that it would put elastic on and turned it in, it's not that far short, but we do want to make sure the wire is going to be held in the right place when we do the fitting. So um, that's all the those bits and we're going to do the straps in a second. I'll just grab them because I've made them fall on the floor. See what I mean? This is definitely the video that should be like a spoof video, <laughs> but sadly it's not. So I will meet you back in just one second. Okay, I've got all my other bits I think that I need. I have my um, prepared elastic straps that we did back at the beginning there with the rings and sliders and I've got my strap tape with my markings strap tape ordinary straps and I've got my um, fastener so usual thing I'm going to just before I sew the uh, elastic into the back scoop I just want to make sure that it's going to be okay yeah that's okay that fits it's not far too big so that will be all right so we're just a quick recap of sewing the back strap on I want to match the corners up just there and hold on to it the lightning stitch if you have it or a regular straight stitch I'm just going to sew along this edge up to the top halfway across and down again hopefully you're familiar with the technique but I just quickly recap it for you. I'm going to just use a long stitch. Um, the, the lightning stitch looks really nice. It doesn't particularly add anything and it takes longer. So <laughs> I'm going to just start off with a regular straight stitch. Okay, so once I've made a little start there I'm, and secured the elastic, sorry I don't know why I left that there, I will now uh, golden rule with elastic it won't go around corners so keep the elastic straight and scoot your fabric to match along this side whoopsie daisy there we go so if you have to manipulate it a couple of times and stop and change it around and that's fine just remember every time you stop to make sure the your needle is in the fabric whilst you do any maneuvering that's necessary Okay. Okay, up to the top and pivot and halfway across and down, pivot and down the other side. off my threads oopsie daisy and whilst the elastic's still here I'm going to just trim that in line so I've got a nice straight line to apply my hook and eye to and then trim off this excess fabric so everything the same as you would have done on a regular bra it's quite important I, I think I did explain before but the reason why we only sew halfway um, across the elastic is that we want one edge of the elastic the edge that's closest to uh, the middle of your back one edge of the elastic to be free to stretch and maneuver as it needs to over your shoulder blades and so on um, and we don't need the fabric underneath because it just gets rucked up so I still do that just the same <coughs> excuse me just the same as if it were a fully fred fledged bra so the same on the other side i will pretend i've done that and then i just have to try and remember because this is partially inside out which side goes on the eyes and which side goes on the hooks i like to keep the hook and eye done up um, whilst i do it it just helps me to remember what side the eyes go on and what side the hooks go on and then i'm going to zigzag this in place rather than do my lovely two straight lines of sewing if you use that method. Okay, so that's 
one side. I don't normally sew it in this sequence. I like to sew the same type of stitch all in one go as far as possible, but I just want to show you this half of a bra at a time. All right, so that's my hook and eye and my back strap stretchy section. And then I'm going to just put the um, strap tape with the one inch markings on just through there. I mean, these are obviously oversized kind of rings and stuff just because I have them and they work. Whoops, no excuse for being sloppy though. There we go. And so I'm going back and forth four times just like I normally would because I really need to make sure that these straps are nice and secure when I'm doing the fitting. Okay, and then as I said at the beginning, I then just have a, a safety pin to put in the other end of the strap so that I can pin it onto the cup uh, ready for a fitting. Actually, I might as well just do that now rather than talk about it, mightn't I? Okay, so make sure your strap's not twisted. Bring it round and pin it along the stay stitching that I did to mark where the strap tab is and the seam would normally be. So that's sitting like that. So now I've got this plenty of um, strap here. I've got plenty of room to, remember I, we added four inches extra onto the length of the strap. So we've got room to maneuver there and we've still got elastic to adjust in the back. So that's one half done and go ahead and do the other half and then the fitting band will be finished and ready for a fitting. So ta-da, as if by magic, here is the finished fitting band as modeled by the lovely Norma. And you can see it's more or less kind of, goes around her at least. Um, so I haven't finished the neckline edge. As I've said um, probably a few times now, we're not looking at the cups. The cups are just there so that we can fit the, the straps and everything. So ignoring the cups, which is why I haven't finished this top edge here. Everything else is finished as if it were a proper bra. As I said in the beginning, um, or just now, you do need to make sure you use the fabrics and the elastics that you intend to use in the finished um, bra that you're, or any of your bras that you're going to make from this fitting band because otherwise you just don't know whether it fits properly or not if you do it haphazard or use any old liquid elastic out the drawer. So this is the band now. We just need to fit it. So you can already see there's a few little issues that are going to need to be addressed just from looking at this one. And so this video really was all about how to make the fitting band, what little alterations you might need to make to the pattern to turn it into a fitting band pattern. Um, and so the next video is going to be how to fit your fitting band. And then we'll start to look at the issues like I've just said at the side and things like that. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And then that way, every time I uh, issue a new video, you'll be automatically notified. You won't have to keep looking to see what's going on if you want to carry on following my uh, tutorials. So that's it for this one and the next one will be all about how to make this band fit you. Thank you.